Hey, what's up everyone? Kevin Carr. And on this week of the movement, we're going to go over some specific stretches to follow up our episode last week where we discussed how to stretch. So at Movement is Medicine and Mike Bolcher in the conditioning, we have some favorite stretches we like to use that really go off the joint by joint approach. And the joint by joint approach is the idea that all our joint systems are prone to a predictable level of dysfunction. Some might be tight and some might be more mobile. And we pick our stretches, especially for our group training, we want to pick stretches that address the joints that tend to be become stiff and immobile in the joint by joint approach. So those joints that we really are going to focus on today are the hips, the thoracic spine, and the cervical. Okay, so I have Errol here to help me. She's going to demonstrate, and I'm going to cue her through some of the stretches so that you can do these on your own and practice them at home. So the first stretch we're going to go over is what we call the 90-90 stretch. And this is a stretch that I learned taking the functional range conditioning course with Andrea Spina. He's someone who's strongly influenced a lot of our mobility approaches at MDSC and Movement is Medicine. So if you're interested in any of the things that we covered here today, I strongly look into the work um, of Andrea Spina and functional range conditioning. So the reason I like this 90-90 stretch, first off, is because it's really efficient. When we stretch into the front hip, we get a combination of flexion and external rotation. And then when we stretch in the back hip, we're trying to improve extension and internal rotation. Okay, so I like to pick stretches that are efficient so we can get the most bang for our buck and spend less time stretching and, and get more out of it rather than doing a whole bunch of stretches. Okay, so when we set up at this 90-90, like the name of the stretch says, we want to have roughly 90 degree angles here at the ankles, knees, and hips and on both sides. Okay, so we want to ensure that position first. Then we want to make sure that we have our hands on either side of this lead leg. Okay, and we want to make, maintain good spinal position throughout it. Because remember, we're trying to get hip flexion and external rotation, not spinal flexion. So we want to make sure that you have a nice straight line from your head all the way down to your hips. Okay? The first thing I want Ariel to do is to contract her glute and think about pressing this leg down to the ground. So she's going to imagine like she's trying to crush my hand. Okay? And I want her to keep that tension throughout the stretch. Now, I want her to think about pulling her chest forward in front of her. So she's getting hip flexion, but not spinal flexion. So she's going to pull herself as far as she can until she starts losing the position in her back. And I want her to stop right there. Okay? Second she starts to round her spine, we want her to stop there. Good. Now, that's a good position there. I want her to continue crushing that leg down to the ground as hard as she can. So she's going to get a little pre-contraction in that tissue. She's going to do that for about a minute. Okay. What that does is it gets past the neurological barrier for stretch. Okay. And then what she's going to find when she lets off here, she's going to be able to sink a little bit deeper. Right. She's really going to hit her actual tissue barrier. Now, for the next minute, I want her to use her hip flexor here and try to think about pulling herself even more forward here into that stretch. And that way she's gonna feel a big stretch pick up in the back side of this hip. Okay, you feel that there? Awesome. Now, like we talked about in our video last week, some things we wanna focus on um, during our stretching is actively breathing, right? So I want her to focus on breathing in the nose deep and long out the mouth. And then she wants to continue to create that tension. We don't want her to just passively sit in a stretch. She wants to think about having the intention trying to pull herself deeper into this stretch so she's creating some tension and active control around that joint. Okay, and I'll have her hold that for at least a minute, continuing to think about pulling deeper and breathing into that position. It's important also, after you stretch in one position, to kind of vary it a little bit, right? Because if you only stretch in one direction, you're really only gonna be strong in one direction. So what I want Ariel to do is slightly just bring her torso towards me. So she can move that left hand about here, move that right hand about here, and now think about pulling herself out over that foot. Does that change the tension in the hip when you stretch that direction? Yeah, so I think ways to progress these things is just practice different angles so you can drive that stretch into different corners of that hip, okay? Now I'm going to have her focus on the rear hip here. So I'm going to have you sit up nice and tall, okay? Put your hands right behind your hips. I want you to think about turning your chest down towards this wall this way. Now we want to make sure that she doesn't lean back and try to substitute using her spine because a lot of times your clients are going to try to get around the areas that are really stiff. So for example, if you just walk your hands backwards and kind of lean back a little bit, okay? They're going to try to extend through their spine and get rotation through their spine rather than extending their hip and rotating through the hip. So watch out for that. So sit up nice and tall. I want you to rotate as far as you can. I want you to press this knee down on the ground, keep it anchored. I want you to drive this knee down on the ground as hard as you can as well. So she's actively driving some internal rotation through this hip. Okay. Now I want her, I want her to focus just driving this knee down and breathing. We're going to do that for about a minute. We're going to fast forward here for the sake of the video. Um, but I would have her do that. Then she would relax that tension. I want you to continue thinking about turning your torso to that back wall and just continue that active rotation against this fixed hip. And I want you to drive this knee down and now focus on breathing. Okay. So as you can see, 
I, again, I like this stretch because you get flexion, external rotation, extension, internal rotation, and then you can simply just switch around the other side and get both those qualities um, in the opposite position. For our next stretch, I want to go over what we call the Spider-Man stretch. Again, I like this stretch because it's really efficient. We can get multiple qualities stretching the hips um, out of one single position. So I'm going to have Ariel start in semi push-up position here. She's going to get to the top of a push-up. Okay. Then she's going to take her right foot and step it outside her right hand. Okay. We want this back hip fully extended. A lot of times people will try to keep that hip flexed because they don't want to get a big stretch here. We want to make sure that hip is extended back. That back toe is dug in the ground. You're going to actively squeeze her glute on this side, press that hip down towards the floor. So she's getting a stretch through her hip flexor over here. Now on the front side, okay, you can see we get the hip extension stretch here, but on the front side we get more of a squat specific stretch, which, which I really, really like. So she's going to put her right hand on top of her right foot. We're going to drive that elbow into the knee. Okay, so we talked about creating tension last week. So what I want her to think about is actively contracting that glute here and then um, opposing that by getting some tension in her abdomen here, so she's kind of crunching down. We don't want her to be broken into extension. We want her to think crunch down while also working through that glute. So on the front side, she's going to drive her elbow into that knee, and then I want her to drive the knee right back in the elbow. So there's almost an isometric going on. So she's got her probably a real nasty stretch feeling going on there, which is fine. And then we're just going to have these hands um, affixed to the ground nice and solid. We don't want her slouching. Okay, and now she's going to just focus on breathing for about a minute. Okay, so... Again, what we get here, hip flexor stretch on this side, very squat specific stretch on this side. So now we've kind of worked the hips in every single direction, just kind of doing two different stretches. Okay, so I'd have them hold for about a minute each. And again, if she wants to try to challenge herself over time, she can kind of change the angle of her torso. For instance, she could sink down lower into the ground. Yep. Um, and create different variations of the same stretch. So this is our second hip stretch, the Spider Man stretch. Give this a try about one minute on each side. So for our next mobility, So for our next mobility drill, we're going to work our way up to the thoracic spine. We find a lot of our clients get really stiff, especially in the thoracic flexion. They're spending a lot of time at the desk, over their cell phone, just modern life kind of pulling us into a flexion position. So we have to spend a lot of time trying to open them back up and get that thoracic spine extending and rotating like it should be. So for our first drill, we're going to have Ariel start here in a kneeling position with her butt all the way back to her heels and her ankles flat on the ground. And we're going to have her flex forward. Put both forearms right down at the midline by the knees. Have her tuck these in just like that. The reason we want to go into flexion is because it takes the lumbar spine out of the movement. A lot of your clients are going to try to substitute in lumbar rotation extension where they cannot get thoracic uh, rotation and extension. So we want to take that option out for them. Okay, So it's really important that they can sit their butt all the way back to their heels and they can get into this flex position. Now she's going to take her left hand, reach across onto the right side of her rib cage. Okay. And this allows us to just focus on the thoracic movement. It kind of takes the shoulder out. Okay. Now, she's going to take a big breath in the nose. Then she's going to exhale, and she's going to look over this left shoulder and try to rotate as far as she can. We want her to lead with her eyes, trying to look over the shoulder. So that drives head rotation. And then when she gets here, we want her to continue to think about trying to pull for a good few seconds so she can get a little bit more rotation out of here. Then she's going to inhale, come right back down. Okay. Exhale, come right back up. Okay, and I'll rotate up. And we want to make sure that she doesn't side bend. A lot of people will try to bend their whole body sideways. Sometimes putting somebody next to a wall or just kind of cueing them with a hand can be a good way to keep them centered so they actually have to get the rotation out of the thoracic spine rather than by side bending. Okay, come back down. Let's just do one more. It's really important to make sure to cue your client to drive this forearm into the ground. That way they have a fixed point to create some mobility off of. Okay, again, continue trying to look to the wall here to drive the motion with the head and the eyes. Inhale, come right back down. Okay. We really want to make sure they stay centered, they're not side bending, and that they're really using the head and eyes to drive the movement. Now, from looking at this position, you can see how this can be troublesome for some people. You might be able to think right now, hey, I can't even get into this kneeling position. How am I going to be able to do this thoracic mobility drill properly? Well, we have another uh, alternative position, and it's a split T-spine. Okay, so this is a good uh, option to use if you can't get in this kneeling position. So let's have you just stand up, split the feet out. Okay. Um, so she's going to get as wide as she can. She's going to put her hands flat on the ground. We want to make sure she sits her hips back behind her. Okay, again, now that we're getting into hip and lumbar flexion a little bit, it's going to make it a lot harder for her to substitute in her low back for the immobility that she might have in the thoracic spine. Okay, I want her to drive this right hand hard down into the ground. Okay, again, so she has a stable point here. Left hand across the rib cage. 
Okay, big breath in the nose. Exhale out the mouth, look over the left shoulder, look for this wall over here, try to actively squeeze here. You, want, you don't want to just get to your end range and stop. You want to get there and think, can I pull, 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 pull as hard as I can, get another centimeter, inhale, come back down. Let's do two more reps. Again, make sure the hips are seated back, feet are nice and wide, drive the motion with the, hand, the head, and think about driving this hand hard down into the ground so that way you have some stability to try to create mobility off of on the opposite side. Let's do one more rep. Down. Exhale, look for the wall here, pull yourself into position, and good. Typically, we'll program either of those for about 10 reps each side, and having the client work on that, continually understanding that they have to have the intent of pulling themselves deeper into the position to make this drill effective. So for our last mobility drill, we're going to work our way all the way up to cervical spine. A lot of people complain of having a tight neck, but actively trying to stretch the tissues in the neck can be very ineffective as well as unsafe. So one thing I like to do is just supported motor control rolling at the cervical spine. I find this to be much more effective because most clients aren't really limited by the length of the tissues as much as they are the motor control around their neck. So simply breathing and practicing some supported rotation on the ground can go a really long way to opening up a stiff and uncomfortable feeling the cervical spine. So first thing we want to do, we see we have aerial laying flat on the ground. We want to make sure they're in a good pelvis position, not in a big extended arch to just make sure they're you know comfortably aligned on the floor it doesn't have to be a big posterior tilt just we don't want them in a huge arch okay make sure their shoulders are relaxed down sometimes just giving them something to support underneath the head or a light pad can make it a little bit more comfortable okay make sure their head is not overextended so lots of times they, someone might lay an extension like this we want them to just be neutral okay you're going to cue them to breathe in the nose Create a little bit of pressure down into the floor with the back of the head, and then they're going to exhale. She's going to go to her right, look the direction she wants to go with her eyes, go as far as she can, trying to bring the chin all the way to the collarbone. Okay, then she's going to breathe in, come back to the middle, exhale, turn to her left. Again, we want to have some tension in there. She's going to contract, so I want to push her head down on the floor and think about actively trying to pull her chin until it touches the collarbone. Breathe in, come back to the middle, exhale rotate, look the direction she's going to go, and you'll find a client might start very limited, but as they get the breathing and they understand the tension, they'll start to open up a little bit more. They're just trying to break through the limited range of motions they have due to the lack of motor control. So as they breathe and start to understand how to create the right tension around the joints, that range of motion is going to open up. Again, just like the T-spine drill, it's really important to cue the eyes because the eyes are going to drive the motion of the head. So we want to see that she's actively turning, actively looking the direction she wants to go, and keeping a nice easy breath in the nose and out the mouth throughout the entire time. All right, everybody, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Tune in next week where we're going to cover some travel hacks, how you can fight jet lag, how you can get better sleep, and how you can manage to fit in your workouts on the road when travel might disrupt your normal schedule.